plaintiff, Malcolm Virgil, dated the defendant, and he claimed she was so jealous that she not only went through his phone, but she also checked the mileage on his car to make sure that he was only driving to and from work. Malcolm suing because he claims the defendant destroyed his television in a fit of rage. Defendant Olympiata Jackson suspected Malcolm was cheating because he was always getting text messages late at night. And when she went through his phone, she found provocative pictures and texts from other women. Olympiata insists she does not owe Malcolm for the television. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Okay, well, me and Ms. Jackson, we used to date on and off. Um, we started dating in 2015. Okay. And uh, Ms. Jackson, when we started dating, Ms. Jackson was okay, but in the middle, she started to get very jealous. Um, she would go through my phone. Uh, she would check the mileage in my car to make sure that I went to work and back home only. Um, he must have gave her a lot of reason to suspect. <laughs> well, no, I think probably because of- the first, checking the mileage. <laughs> Why are you giving all these women ideas? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, um, we also had a, a situation where she came to my job and uh, she accused me of actually having an affair with my boss's daughter. And she had to end up being removed by the police. My boss did end up calling the police uh, to remove her. Uh, we broke up after that. What and was she saying? Oh, well, she was saying when that... she got there, with, to well, have with, to be removed, she had to be... Well, she, she came in the door, and she just... She looked at me. I was on my phone when she came in, and she asked who There you go with that the girl. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I came up here. Caught you in the act. <laughs> you know you I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you want some? You can get some, too, Mr. Boss. <laughs> Now, any of y'all in here want some? <laughs> now, that will get the police called on you, ma'am. <laughs> you yeah. tell me how things went. Tell me about this Well, first of all, Malcolm is not as innocent as he seems. He's been cheating throughout the whole relationship. So, you know, basically, he would start acting weird. And when you live with somebody, you know the difference between what's weird and what's not. So I felt as though I asked him, who keep texting you, you know, late night and all this extra stuff. He goes, oh, it's just a coworker. Why so late? What y'all talking about? Can I see? No, so I did, I broke his code to his phone and I read it and behold, Sir, provocative pictures. You didn't know what to say when she <laughs> says, who's that calling you so late? Well, I, I didn't You're supposed at the, to say that first... person lives on the West Coast, honey. <laughs> and it's, no, it's nine no, o'clock no. there. It's not, <laughs> it's I'm not smarter than that. there, honey. I'm <laughs> smarter than that. I know go, better than that. Go ahead. You know? So what happened? And it was just voicemails at the voicemails, pictures at the pictures, little booby shots at the booby shots. Like, I mean, you know, just... Was that before so or after you started him, checking the mileage on this car? That Okay, about the mileage thing. <laughs> I did do that one time because I felt as though this man was lying. Okay, because if you're at work, how are you home so early if you went to work? It's not possible. So I did check that one time. Just one time, not all the time. What about going up to his job? I was actually on my way to the store. <laughs> and A different store. No, his store. Well, that's what we're saying you went. Yeah, I was on my way to go get other things, though. Like I wasn't going to, you like know, be all nosy. Like what? What like other Groceries, things? you know, little things. And he was actually on the phone with the same girl that left the voice. How now. do you know he, who he was on the phone because with? Because I asked him. While he's at work on the phone, you come in to his job and say, who is that you're talking to on the phone? No, actually, He's, he asked me why, why didn't I go to the interview? And I thought I was on my way. I had to get a couple of things. And so I asked him, well, who are you on the phone with? 
You questioning me who you on the phone with. No, he just asked why you didn't go to the interview to benefit you. The okay, two but of if you're you. a manager, why are you on the phone? Do your job. Because that's what managers do. They talk with other <laughs> employees. They talk with folks that they get their inventory from. They do many things, ma'am. Uh, yeah, you. Then why did they have to call the police on you? What did you do? <laughs> well, I was, I guess, doing a little extra and s- tell me saying a little extra. Tell me pushing stuff. And- you went through knocking stuff down in his workplace. Yeah. I felt Did like you all come be- back together after that? Um, we spoke after that. A um, little bit about a month after that, she informed me that she was expecting. Um, so at that point, uh, we did have to come up with some type of arrangement to where we could get along and mm-hmm. we did not fight. Um, and we basically was friends after that. We're going to get to the television shortly, but go ahead. When that happened and I was on the phone with her and she asked me about the message and I informed her that that message was one of my coworkers that work. That was his girlfriend informing me that he was not going to be to work the next day. So I informed her when she called me, I was still at work. I cannot sit here and argue with you while I'm at work. There's customers in the store. There's my superiors in the store. And, you know, I can't sit argue with you. Correct. So when I got, I got, when I got off, I looked at my phone and she had sent me a text message stating that she was going to tear up everything in the house and including me when I get in the house. (laughs) So. I took it and I went to the nearest police station and had them escort me to my house. There you go. When I got to the house, everything was knocked off the wall. The TV was upside down. The bed had been flipped. So I grabbed my stuff and left because I felt myself get very angry. And I went ahead along and left. Very smart man. I hope all of the men who are watching today and get upset, all seriousness, who get upset because of whatever reason with their girlfriend, their spouse, or otherwise, that they do just that. Leave. Go to the police, as you did. So I'm going to give you a hand. Thank you. You did right. So what happened to you at the job, though? Did you, you weren't uh, disciplined or anything, were you at your job because she started crashing things? I didn't know she did that at the job. Um, no, uh, me and the owner of that business was actually very close. Okay. So he understood. What he was knows your value to the right, job. That shows right. you're doing a great job. The television, how did, out of all the things, how do you pinpoint that as uh, a claim today? Well, because everything else besides the television we had bought purchased together, okay. that was something that I wanted that she did not agree I should have bought, so I had to end up buying it with my money. Okay. Um, I explained to her later on after that, after we spoke, that uh, she needed to replace that. She said that wouldn't have been a problem. Um, I told her, I said, I forgive you, but that's something that you need to replace. Uh, say about a year went past, nothing, two years. I keep in mind, she's like, oh, I'm going to pay it, you know, but at the same time, she's the mother of my son. So, you know, I understand that she has other things she mm-hmm. has to do. Um, so I didn't really press the issue, but I told her, I said, you know, you, that you still owe me for that TV. And she acknowledged, but she never paid. Ma'am, what do you say? Well, Your Honor, he did forgive me for paying the TV, for uh, destroying his TV. And he did also say that I did not have to pay for the TV. Negative. And it's no true, Negative. but any two times is not going his way is when he brings the TV up. So, I mean, yeah, I broke the TV. I acknowledge I broke the TV, but he also said, when was the last me. time he mentioned the television to you? About <laughs> two months ago. Okay. And it occurred a couple of years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So if he forgave you, why do you think he mentioned it to you two months ago? <laughs> so Shouldn't have to pay. I got a whole child of his. Like, pardon me. I have a whole baby with him. Why do I have to pay? Uh, for this and that's baby? sad. Uh, judgment oh. for the plaintiff. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars is your judgment. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> she just needs to control her anger a little bit better in order to, you know, avoid these type of situations. But I'm glad the judge saw it. You know that it was fair for her to pay me back. And I feel that you're very challenged. I have your child. A TV? Really? Over Pampers? You want a TV? 